Hello, welcome to the Villages of Florida. My name is David. I'm a realtor with Florida Realty Investments, and you can reach me either at davidisinflorida at gmail.com or through our website, davidisinflorida.com. Every week we take a look at what's happening in the real estate market generally and the Villages of Florida specifically. If you watch this show even for one week, you'll have a pretty good idea as to where values are in the different regions of the villages and what the historical trends are. So stay tuned. We're going to cover all of that, and we do so every Monday. A couple of things to note. We produce this show every week. Make sure you check the date to ensure you're watching the most recent information. Second is all of this information is drawn from the multiple listing service. Do not have access to the VLS, the Villages Listing Service, which is an entirely separate marketplace here in the Villages. Sellers decide whether they're going to list on VLS or MLS. The Villages puts all of its new uh, properties on VLS. If you're a buyer and considering previously owned homes, you really need to have agents representing you who can show you both MLS and VLS properties. It doesn't really matter if one uh, listing service has more listings than the other, because without access to both, you won't be able to see everything on the market. If you find this information useful, please consider liking or subscribing. It really helps uh, the YouTube algorithm, helps the channel grow. Please reach out to us if you have any questions, either at davidisinflorida at gmail.com or uh, through our website, davidisinflorida.com. We're always happy to answer questions and do research uh, for our clients. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at what's happening uh, in the villages this week. We start every week by taking a look at the yield on the 10-year government note. This is the note that the mortgage rate most closely tracks. And what you're looking at here are daily bars, in other words, showing the yield on the 10-year going back a little over a year. Today, the 1st of April, uh, the yield on the 10-year note rose by almost 15 basis points, uh, 0.15 of a percent. You can see, uh, looking at this chart, that the yield on the 30-year has been between 35 and 5% over the last year. It looks as though we're going to be testing the higher boundary of this range. Uh, real estate, you would think, would suffer as financing costs increase. Now we'll take a look at the villages itself, and what you're looking at here is uh, a map showing all active listings on the MLS currently. The size of the dot denotes the size of the property, and the color of the dot denotes its price per square foot. So the larger the circle, the larger the home, and the darker the circle, the less expensive per square foot. I'm also going to show you uh, prior activity over the last 60 days using the same format, but for now, let's just take a look at the different regions of the villages. This is the entirety of the villages we're looking at currently. This is the area that I'm calling the Villages North. It is everything south of 42 and everything north of 466. It also includes Spanish Springs, and we can uh, perform analysis on these regions of the Villages uh, separately to uh, illuminate the comparisons between them. This is the area I'm calling the uh, Mid-North. Once again, the graphs that I'm showing you now represent all active listings on the MLS. This is the area I'm calling the Mid-South, uh, everything north of Highway 44. Once again, current active listings. And this is the area that I'm referring to as the South, which is everything south of Highway 44. I would caution you that if you are looking in the South, it appears that VLS has more listings than MLS currently. You really should be looking at homes on both marketplaces. But unless you look at homes on both marketplaces, you will not see everything for sale. So now let's take a look at the villages as a whole. These are total listings on MLS. This week, they're number 380, up from 376 last week, and higher than the 350 that was in effect a year ago. Currently, homes in the villages range from 122,500 to 1,365,000. We're going to take a look at long-term charts for a moment to get some idea of trends. What we're looking at here is the median listing price per square foot for all active listings on the MLS. This week, up very slightly from 260.10 to 260.42, but this is still below the 261.89 that was the median listing price for all listings same week last year. Here we can look at median time on the market for all listings, which this week is 41 days. 
an improvement from the 45-day median time of the previous week, but higher than the 39 and a half median days on the market the same week a year ago. Here we take a look at the differences between the regions of the villages. What we're looking at here is how many listings there are at each price segment. And on the right-hand side, you can see it broken down by region. You can see how many homes are available uh, by price in each of the regions of the villages on the right and for the entirety of the villages on the left. This is the same information. We're looking at all active listings in the villages, but this time instead of breaking it down by price, we're breaking it down by heated area, which is essentially the size of the home. You can see on the left uh, how many properties there are in each of the size segments in the villages. And on the right, you can see uh, how it breaks down for the different regions of the villages. I wanted to dive a little deeper into what this tool can do. What we're looking at here is the area I've described as the Mid-North. It's between Highway 466 and Highway 466A. This map is showing you all active listings in the villages currently. Uh, as, as I said, the size of the circle denotes the size of the home, and the color of the circle denotes its price per square foot. The lighter the circle, the more expensive the home. The larger the circle, the larger the home. As I said, these are all active current listings. But we can also take a look at the same area at homes that either went pending or sold over the last 60 days, giving us a pretty good idea as to comps and values. You would think that this would be valuable to prospective buyers, being able to see at a glance what sold, where, and at what prices, helping you to determine what a good price would be for the home that you are interested in. And we can focus on any area to any level of detail. Uh, as you see, we have the data to analyze, and we can find what you're looking for. So now that we've taken a look at listings, let's take a look at the state of the market. And we start by looking at new listings and homes going pending. This is over the last seven days. It gives us a pretty good idea as to buyer and seller enthusiasm. Last week, 46 new listings and 46 homes went pending. The market was in balance. Last year, the same week, there were 40 new listings and 47 homes went pending, so slightly stronger. We'll have to watch uh, to see how this develops. Obviously, if new listings keep coming onto the market and pending home sales uh, slow down, this will be a problem. To that end, we've started keeping track of the difference between new listings and homes going pending. As you can see this week, the difference is zero identical number of homes being listed as going pending. We need to see uh, prints above the zero line, which would indicate more homes going pending than being listed. Numbers below the zero line indicate more supply than demand is able to absorb. Looking at the homes that went pending last week, first we're going to look at how long they were on the market before going pending. A median 39 days compared to only 30 days for the week before, and close to the 45 days that it took for homes going pending on the market last year. Here we look at the price per square foot on the homes that went pending last week. 250.105 up from the 246.95 of the previous week, but still below the 254.45. The graph is a four-week moving average, and the numbers you see are actual weekly data points. We watch this data point to see if uh, it provides us any early warning, and what we're looking at is the price reduction for the homes that went pending over the last seven days. The median reduction was a 6.1% reduction compared to only a 4.74% reduction for the previous week, and this 6% reduction is far worse than the 4.5% that was required for homes that went pending a year ago. So now let's look at sales. These are the homes that sold and closed last week. They numbered 48, identical to the 48 of the previous week, and more than the 41 homes that closed the same week a year ago. Homes that closed in the villages last week ranged in price from $165,000 to $875,000. This is quite an aggressive number. This is the price per square foot realized on the homes that closed last week. 249 a foot down from 267 the previous week and even below the 251 from the same week a year ago. Once again, these are the homes that sold and closed last week. But even though sellers reduced their prices last week, the median time on the market for the homes that sold was down. Median time 27 days compared to 34 the previous week and compared to 39 days on the market for the homes that closed a year ago. 
Now we're going to go back and take a look at all listings again. And what we're looking at is what percentage have reduced their asking price from the original listing price. 54.47% have compared to over 56% who did so last week. And this is worse than the 51.5% of sellers that had reduced their asking price the same week a year ago. And here we look at what the median reduction for all listings actually is. Currently a 4.95% reduction from the original listing price, identical to the 4.95% that was in effect last week, but not much improved from the 5% median reduction that was in effect for the same week a year ago. That is this week's look at the Villages real estate market. If you would like a data-driven approach, if you're interested in determining what a good value would be for a house you're interested in, either buying or selling, we will certainly uh, help you with the research and show you how we get to the uh, numbers that we do. With the real estate market changing as it is, uh, maybe it's time to rethink the, uh, the value or the role of the real estate advisor. Contact me either at davidisinflorida at gmail.com or through my website, davidisinflorida.com. Be happy to entertain any thoughts that you have. Uh, we may be announcing something over the next week in terms of uh, new commission schedules. Stay tuned or subscribe to be notified of that change. And I'd like to finish by thanking everybody who has listened this long. And for those loyal subscribers who've joined the channel, thank you so much for the encouragement. Uh, if you have any questions about life in the villages, if you're a buyer and you're trying to get the best deal you can, or you're a seller trying to get the best deal you can, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you, advise you, answer any questions that you have. Once again, David is in Florida at gmail.com or davidisinflorida.com. Hope to hear from you. Take care.